few hours ago we got the finale of Arcane, and so let's do what we always do. With our feelings still fresh, let's talk about how good was the ending. So, I have to say, God damn it, right? You did it again. After an amazing beginning with the episodes one to three and a really good continuation uh, with the with Act Two, Act Three delivers on the ending, and without spoilers, I have to say. This is really good. Now, there will be some minor issues, we will get to those uh, when we talk about the spoilers, uh, especially at the very, very, very end, but those issues really have nothing to do with the series itself, it's just like, it's just the structuring of the series. You'll know exactly what I mean when we get to that, but right now, Act 3, in my opinion, if I had to give it a score, it is a 9 out of 10. It is not perfect, there were some things that could be better, but 9 out of 10 is still very, 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 very good. And now, obviously, I think everyone knows that there is gonna be season 2. Uh, this was confirmed by Riot CEO. We are gonna get a second season, for obvious reasons, if you have seen the series. And uh, that caught me off guard. I actually thought that there would be episode 10, because the events would line up with that. Uh, for example, in... Uh, in League of Legends and in Wild Rift, we are getting the, the Vi and Caitlyn skins right now, but the Jinx skin, especially in League, the Jinx skin is actually coming on the 23rd, which I believe is three days after the finale. That's why I thought that there may be an unannounced 10th episode, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It seems like we will be getting a second season. And yeah, I'm really glad to see that, because there are obviously some uh, loose ends that should be connected, but we'll get to those when we talk about the spoilers. So now, if you haven't seen this, just go and watch it. This was absolutely incredible. Riot, this is amazing, and I understand why, even without the feedback you got, even without it, because obviously, you know, it takes years to make these, even though uh, the series wasn't even released, I believe you are already working on the second season because uh, I believe you know what you got on your hands. So, and since right now I believe uh, Arcane is uh, number 15 on the best rated series in the world. Yeah. I'm looking forward to season 2, but now, okay, so now we're gonna dive into the spoilers. So, uh, if you haven't seen the series, just go and watch it because this is definitely worth your time. Now, on to the spoilers. In episode 7, at the very beginning, it was obvious it would be Echo. It was obvious the leader would be Echo, and that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, it was accidentally leaked on a Brazilian merch store, I believe, where the little mask was actually titled Echo. And also, I was so close with putting this in the last details video, um, at the at the very end in the in the credits, the voice actor of the Firelight leader uh, was actually uh, the, his character was titled Echo. Now, when I was making the details video, Netflix changed it in time, and so now if you go to the last episode of Act Two, you will see that the voice actor simply has the character leader of the Firelight, I believe, or the Firelight leader. So yeah. They changed that, they fixed it, you know, Echo wasn't credited in the in the final scene anymore, but still, it leaked, unfortunately, that Echo would be that character, and, you know, looking at all the things around that, it was obvious that it would, it, that it would be Echo, so it wasn't a massive reveal, but it was still very cool to see. Uh, we then got some interactions with Victor and Singed. Those were really cool, but there weren't too many of those. Like, uh, Singed just told him, like, uh, it is possible, but it's gonna be really hard to pull off, and that's all he's told, told Victor, so like, Singed, when it comes to Victor, I thought there would be more, but you know, that's fine. We then, had th we then got some crazy scenes with Jinx, for example, she was uh, fixing her leg with a stampler, so that kind of gave you the idea of how crazy she is. Uh, then there were, there, there was the amazing reveal of Echo's wall of memories, you know, all the people that died. This, of course, was a callback to the original uh, teaser for Echo. That was a really awesome moment. And then we got to the Canberrans. <clears throat> now, I thought that, I thought that Finn 
could be the next champion. Because remember, the champion, the next champion should be somehow tied to Arcane, maybe. You know, they should be tied to Piltover and so on. So that's why I thought that Finn could actually be the next champion. Because he's a really cool character, or at least visually. Um, but no, you know, later what happens to him happens to him. So no, that can't be him. Um, then... There are some great moments with Jinx and Silco, where Jinx really gets crazy after she learns that uh, Silco lied to her and that Vi is actually alive. Um, then there is the brilliant moment with uh, Piltover kind of like leaning towards maybe making Hextech weapons, even though that's really not what they wanted to do. And then we got to like my favorite part of episodes uh, 7 and 8. In the, la in, in the final one, he wasn't there too much, but 7 and 8, definitely, Victor, Victor stole the show for me. Victor has been always one of my favorite characters in League of Legends, and here he absolutely delivers on that. Victor is amazing! His transmutation, how, like, the more he taps into the power of the hex core, he becomes more, almost more machine-like, even though it's not really machinery, it's just, like, magic taking over his body. So as he becomes more and more magical, the hex core itself becomes more and more flesh-like. And I wonder if there are actually connections to the void, because the hex core does become more and more void-like, so... Uh, I am not exactly sure what's happening with that, but Victor's transmutation, his transformation was absolutely amazing. Um, then, we got Marcus's final scene. Marcus has been one of my favorite characters in Arcane. Marcus was awesome. And seeing Marcus go was really awesome. Not to be not to be the weird person to see people die, uh, but uh, Marcus's final scenes were amazing because you could see that he was hesitant whether he should actually shoot Caitlyn or not because, of course, he didn't want to do that. But he had to do it to make sure that his family was safe. He had to kill Caitlyn for Silk because Silco needed it to happen. So, you could see that Marcus had this final choice to save his family. Until his very last moment, he was fighting for his family. And of course, he didn't make it. Which makes me wonder, is Marcus's daughter gonna be an important character later on? Is his daughter in the future gonna turn into a champion or something like that, because that is a character that is left open. And you know, since there is season 2, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Marcus's daughter became an important character. Uh, then, uh, near near the end of episode 7, we got uh, Jinx as she walked on the bridge. I noticed that she was singing the song about the river Pilt from the very beginning of the series, that was a cool detail. And then there was Jinx's battle with Echo. I have to say, the fight scenes in, in Act 3 were stellar. The fight scenes can easily carry Act 3 for people who don't care about the story. They were so good and it's, it's a payoff at the end for every character because, of course, Jinx and uh, the Firelight leader fought in Act 2 and so this was supposed to be like their kind of their finale, you know, the fight between Echo and Jinx. And that fight was so well made. Of course, there were some references to, like, Echo rewinding time, even though, you know, he doesn't really rewind, re rewind time now. But that fight was absolutely amazing. And there was a lot of setup at the end here for episode 8. So now, as we go into episode 8, we got, at the beginning there, we got Mel's flashbacks with Noxus. Of course, we knew that we, that she was Noxian because, first of all, she painted the Immortal Bastion. And second of all, the, the in League of Legends, the in-game tip actually reveals that her mother is a, is a war leader from Noxus. So we knew that she would be, uh, that she would be Noxian. We then got Caitlyn presenting her case up in Piltover. And from there, everything really, really started kind of unfolding. Like, all the preparations that were there, everything now was ready to get released. Uh, we got Singed was revealed, is his full face, uh, not obviously, you know, not without a mask, but Singed's eye is green now. That wasn't exactly explained, but uh, he does have green eye in, in the canon story. And I like how they connected Singed to the canon universe. My only issue with Arcane, and you'll see this reflecting on the final score, 
My only issue with, with Arcane is that they retcon stuff. There was no reason to rewrite the story, but they did it anyway. Well, in Act 3, we are learning that they didn't really do that. For example, Singed can easily be one of the one of the best characters ever written for League of Legends, because in the canon stories that you can find on Universe, Singed actually has some of the best stories out there. Him making Warwick, we'll get to that. That was a good story, but that's by far not his best. His best story is the one where he was working on the two people, where he was stitching them together, where he was trying to figure out how to prolong lives. What, that's one of the best stories in League of Legends, and there it was revealed that Singed was a professor in Piltover. In this story, we learned that Singed was actually in contact with Heimerdinger, and the two parted ways. So, in the past, it was revealed that Singed was in Piltover. So he was likely a, a Piltover professor, so when it comes to Singed, nothing was, ret no nothing was retconned. It's only that... The timelines are slightly different, so for example, we thought that uh, that uh, Singed stitching people together was a, pre was a present story. Well, apparently, that's not the case. Uh, it seems like maybe that happened in the past when uh, Singed was still a professor, or it is possible that Singed will go back to Piltover and he will pretend to be a professor so that he can experiment down in zone. Uh, regardless, a big point of for Arcane is that they didn't retcon as much as I thought. They retconned only some small things, we'll get to that a little, a little bit later, but yeah. Singed was dealt with really well, even though Singed didn't really have a massive role here. Now, back to Mel. Mel had a reunion with her mother. Her mother is an amazing character. It's so well written. Ah, she's gonna be important in Act 2, definitely. There's gonna be some Noxian shenanigans happening there. Uh, we then got... Caitlyn's moment with Vi. So yeah, not confirmed yet, that comes later, but uh, when Vi was remembering Jinx, uh, she had a moment with Caitlyn in Caitlyn's bed, uh, unironically, I guess. Uh, that was awesome. That was like, that was such a good tease. Um, and then, that immediately goes into Singed, ex not experimenting, Singed fixing Jinx. So now it is revealed that Jinx's craziness actually comes from Singed. And that is a really good tie-in. I love how Arcane is just connecting all the characters. Everyone gets connected together. It's absolutely brilliant. Especially if you know the lore, this series is just so awesome. Uh, then we got Heimerdinger's descent from the council. How he suddenly, like, he went to Zone and he experienced the real world that... He was governing, but he didn't even know about that. That was such a good scene. Heimerdinger, even though he had like little to no time on screen during the final act, Heimerdinger was so great. Um, then we go back to Mel's mother, who had some moments with Jace, and she successfully corrupted Jace, and she forced him into uh, turning more towards the weapons. Even though... At the end, uh, we'll see that Jace will go back to peace, but yeah, uh, Mel's mother successfully started corrupting the counselors of Noxus, which is a real awesome foreshadowing of what's Noxian in intention with Piltover. Uh, then, we finally, I believe it was in episode 9, although my notes say that it was episode 8. Uh, eight. Uh, yeah, Caitlyn and Vi later were confirmed. Their relationship was real. They decided not to continue it because uh, Vi had to go and actually fight while Caitlyn couldn't, so... But yeah, Caitlyn and Vi are real. Their relationship is confirmed. Deal with that however you want. Um, then, my favorite scenes were Victor becoming a mage. Victor carving the runes into his leg and the, the Hexcore claiming his leg and... The, the scene where Victor broke into running, that that was so magical. All puns intended, I guess. I just, even though Victor didn't do much, Victor was so amazing. And then Sky came in, and Victor's moment with Sky. Killing Sky, 
And immediately after that, learning that Sky loved him. And after that, learning that, because if you look at the notes, uh, you can see that Sky was actually doing the research on the flowers regarding the hex core. Sky was actually helping him with the research. So, like, if he had her by his side, he would have sped up the process. And so, that just... Victor and Sky came out of nowhere. It was so good. It was absolutely amazing. And... Even though, even though Victor kind of transforming into a mage, uh, it looks like he's a machine. Uh, he's not really a machine. The visuals are kind of like... And I'm not sure what the visuals really are about, but it looks like a machine, which is a foreshadowing of what he eventually becomes. But no, uh, his leg is not mechanical. Alright, he's just partially made out of, out of magic now. And then, uh, you know how in the last episode I said that... Uh, the fights were amazing. Yeah, we then got uh, Jace's fight with the Chemtech tanks. Chemtech tanks? You know, the tanks. The tank guys. Uh, together with Vi. Those fights are so good. L once again, the fights in these episodes just carry Act 3 easily. And... I just... I'm, uh, uh, I, I have to say... I don't think I said my score for episode 7. Uh, my score for episode 7 is good 8 out of 10. Alright? It's very good, very solid. It's just a setup. Episode 8 is where the setup kind of like gradually goes up and up and you kind of reek in the rewards. So, my score, especially after the final fight, my score for that episode, for episode 8, is 9 out of 10. So good! It was amazing! And with... Caitlyn being ambushed by Jinx in her shower at the end. Uh, that was such a good setup for the final episode. Uh, but yeah, with that, we go into the final episode. There... Uh, it's there that Victor actually learned that uh, Sky w uh, finished Victor's research. That was an amazing detail. Um, then, uh, it was revealed that the, that the Void was getting more and more... Sorry, that the Hex Core was getting more and more Void-like. Which, once again, is kind of a new thing, but I assume it is connected to Shimmer, because... I believe... No, actually, it is true, because Victor jacked himself with Shimmer, and then he cut his hand so that his blood would react to the Hex Core. So the Shimmer was drawn into the Hex Core. Maybe that's why it is actually getting more Void-like, especially because the Void adapts, and the Hex Core adapts as well. It makes sense why the Hex Core would be turning into a kind of like a void sentient being. But that's. I just like that interactivity there. Now, Victor dealing with Sky's ashes. Like back down in Zone, back where they were kids. What a touching scene. And then he thought about. You know. Uh, hopefully uh, it's fine to say that on YouTube. It's a fictional character, alright? Anyway. Uh, you know, was, was, was Victor uh, thinking about taking his own life, and then he was stopped by Jace, uh, with the exact same sentence that Victor said, uh, told him in Act 1. That was a really cool scene. Um, and then they, they talked about how they wanted to destroy the weapons. Just a brilliant character development over all the series. Um, then Mel, Mel's mother kind of revealed that uh, she just wanted, needed to web the weapons because the, their family was in danger. That's all set up for, for Season 2, definitely. Um, then we got the brilliant scene full of tension with Savika pretending to be betraying Silco. Of course, she didn't betray Silco and she killed Finn. So Finn is not going to be the next champion, even though Finn was actually pretty awesome. Um... Then we got, then we got Jace contacting Silco to make a deal with him so that there could be peace in Zone. That was also a really good setup because you see, Jace was the one who wanted to fight. He was all in with the weapons, but then he realized, yeah, uh, I actually killed uh, some of my own people, so maybe peace is gonna be the better option. That's why he went to Silco with the with that, and uh, right after that. So that, okay, so the, the piece is a setup for the finale in, epi in, in the final episode. You'll, you, we'll talk about it in just a moment. Uh, we then got Silco going to the statue of Vander to drink with him, 
to reflect on their past. Just this episode is full of emotions. It is amazing. Uh, and then, once again, the fights. We then got the fight of Savika versus Vi. That was so good. That was probably my favorite fight of this entire series. And it's and I'm glad it was the final fight. The final action fight of the series was Vi and Savika. That fight was so good in the bar. Of course, you know, Vi lost, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and then they up back up in Piltover, they all voted that uh, Zone would be a free nation. Zone would be separated because up until now, no one talks about Zone because Zone theoretically doesn't exist. The entire city is built over, even though Zone was there before. You know, we talked about the history of, the, of those places for so long now. Uh, but up until now, built over was just everything. Everything was built over. So now, in se in season two, we will get the separation between built over and Zone finally. Um, and this got us to the finale. Where Jinx has the best scene of this series. And actually, let me correct that. I don't know which one is better. I don't know if I like this, like, pure insanity scene. Or if I like the finale of Act 1 more. But Act 2, okay, Act 1 was a way bigger bomb. That came out of nowhere and that just caught everyone by surprise. The finale of Act 3, we kinda knew what to expect. And it was still good, like Riot delivered so well on the very last scene. Because that was what was the most important. We needed this perfect beginning of the series to end with a perfect ending. And I think they almost got there. Because you see, the scene was full of tension. It And, and I really bought into the craziness. Her, uh, her kind of like dealing with Caitlyn and having everyone there. There was, Milo was there. Glagor was there, she actually had a, a picture of Vander there with his gloves as well. Silco was there, her family was there, that was the point. But she had this family there and then there was Caitlyn. And she was like, alright Vi, kill Caitlyn. Because she's not part of the family. And you just could just sense the craziness so well. And you know, there was the scene with the cupcake. Uh, of course I knew she wouldn't like, you know kill uh, Caitlyn during the, the earlier scene, because, you know, Caitlyn is still a character. Uh, but that was so cool with the, with the cupcake. And, uh, of course, the very finale is that uh, she kills Silco on accident. Which brings us back to Act 1, because it, in Act 1, she killed her adoptive father, Vander, by accident. In Act 3, she killed her adoptive father, Silco, by accident. So no matter what Jinx does, she just keeps accidentally killing people. And that's such a good trope in her character. It's not even a trope, it's just, it just happens. And then we get to the very, very, very end. Uh, there was a flashback of absolutely everyone from the top of my mind. Uh, this was obviously a setup for season two. We got Heimerdinger talking to Echo. They were this with the talk in the uh, talk. With the with the clock in the in the front, you can see that they were discussing the how time works, especially with Heimerdinger being a Yordle. So this is a, th that was a foreshadowing for uh, for Echo making the Z drive. Uh, there was a flashback of of Singed, who was obviously uh, making Warwick in the background. So once again, nothing is retconned. The timelines just make sense. So uh, and of course, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be Vander. It's gonna be Vander. Vander's gonna... He has to be Warwick. I think that's the setup here. And he's gonna return in Season 2. Uh, th there's no way around that. And uh, then we get the very finale of Jinx shooting her rocket launcher. Fish Bones, which... There was... Okay, I, I'll talk about this in the details, details video. But I believe that Fish Bones was actually themed after some of the creatures which Vi and Jinx created in, in her mind when they were kids. We'll talk about it in the details, but... She shoots the rocket launcher, she shoots Fish Bones... And right as the council was about to strike peace with Zorn, right as they agreed on the peace, Jinx destroyed it and, the, and, and all the peace is gone. Of course, 
that's gonna be in season two. I kind of want to make a separate video talking about what is possible to what can possibly happen in season two. But yeah, uh, Mel Mel's gonna die. There's no way. There's no way she survives. Uh, but yeah. So, in my opinion, episode three, as well as act three, are nine out of ten. It's a very good finish to season one. But it's not 10 out of 10 for, for the last episode. Because, and for Act 3, because I feel like the cliffhanger is way too big. Now, and this is a double-edged sword. You see, in, and I wrote it down, in uh, this entire series, the point is that everything goes always right. It's always awesome, and then something screws up. That happened with Victor, that, that happened with Jace, with killing uh, one, of the, one of the miners, that happened with Jinx, obviously, it happens to everyone. Everything is really awesome, everything goes down well, and then something screws up. And this is the roller coaster of Arcane. Um, which means, and uh, this is the best part of Arcane. It's always that there is a setup and a bit of a payoff. But that leads into another setup, and that is later paid off. And that's why this, this series is never boring. That's why you always feel like something is happening. It's because there is always either a setup or it's a payoff. There is nothing boring in between. Everything has a purpose, everything has a reason. There is not a moment that wouldn't be paid off later on. Now, with that said, that might be a flaw for the series. The cliffhanger is way too big. But, that is a setup for Season 2, so if they paid off even more at the end of Season 1, they wouldn't have too much to, de to deal with, with se in Season 2. So, Victor's final transmutation has to be in Season 2. So that's a cliffhanger. Um, Zone separating from Piltover, that's a cliffhanger. We get uh, Jinx's madness not really erupting. I kind of find it, find it strange that after she was dumped with uh, or pumped with uh, Shimmer, she was a bit more peaceful than before, which is kind of like, yeah, sure. But Jinx is a massive cliffhanger on, on her own. Um, I'm not sure. Actually, yes. Uh, Vi didn't even join the Wardens yet. So, of course, Vi is going to join the Wardens because of Caitlyn, you know, their relationship. But that is a cliffhanger as well. Warwick and Vander, that is a cliffhanger as well. What happened to Rio, that is a cliffhanger as well. By the way, did you notice? Did you notice that uh, Singed said that he once had a daughter too? I don't think she. I don't think he had a real daughter. I think he's talking about Rio. Anyway, there are so many cliffhangers that it might be slightly harmful to the series, but I understand why the cliffhangers are there. It's because they need material for season 2, and it is awesome to see that they are planning ahead of time. So, while it is not a perfect ending, and that's because it is not an ending, it is a setup for season 2, it is still 9 out of 10, this is an amazing series, I can't believe we are getting a second season. I thought that Wright would end Piltover, go to another region, and keep going there. That's not the case. We are actually getting season 2 of Arcane. This is insane. See you in 4 years. God damn it, this is gonna take a while because, uh, yeah, Act 1 was in works for 6 years. When are we gonna get season 2? I don't know, but god damn it, this was such a, this was such a love letter to the Lee community. This was amazing. Just god damn it, Rito. Uh, I can't wait! I, w I couldn't wait for the finale of this. I can't wait for season two. Thank you, Riot, for doing this. I'll see you when we talk about the details. Gosh dang it.